I've been the director of the Dark Hammerschild Foundation between 2006 and 2012. And since then, I'm the director emeritus, who is still affiliated to the foundation as a senior advisor. And I felt very proud to be associated with Dark Hammerschild, who for me has already before been a role model when it comes to the integrity and loyalty to fundamental principles and values. He had an ethics that lived up to global justice, equality and fairness respect for human dignity and the diversity of humanity in this world without making hierarchical value judgments. When in 1956 France and Great Britain backed up Israel to intervene in Egypt to occupy the territory to get control over the Suez Canal because they were afraid that under Nasser the canal would be nationalized. Dark Hammarskjöld realized that that was a clash which for a short time created a window of opportunity to bring together the Soviet and the US American interests because both big powers were interested in a global free trade vis-a-vis -vis the vested interests of the established colonial powers who still cultivated the ties to their former or even current colonies as the main pattern for trade patterns and exchanges. So at that time Tunisia as one of the member states of the Global South was a temporary member of the Security Council. And Hammarskjöld motivated Tunisia to submit a draft resolution in the Security Council which stood a chance to get the support of the Soviet Union and the USA to give a mandate to the United Nations to intervene to secure peace and stability and to bring a solution to the Suez crisis. This happened and knowing that the Soviets and the US would support that motion, it basically eliminated the veto of France and Great Britain, who then abstained together with China on that resolution. So their hands were basically tied, which then allowed the adoption of that resolution and created a situation where Dark Hammarskjöld uh, picked up an idea to create the blue helmets to be dispatched in the Suez crisis. Especially de Gaulle from France was extremely upset and uh, while Hammarskjöld always kept a low profile in the Swedish tradition, you're not bragging, it's this Lagom approach, you're not bragging about your merits, your achievements. Actually, we know that in one of his private letters uh, to a close friend in Sweden, he sent a cartoon which was published in one of the leading uh, daily newspapers in the USA which showed in 1960 or 61 uh, President de Gaulle meeting Nikita Khrushchev from the Soviet Union and uh, de Gaulle had uh, a badge saying I don't like dark and Khrushchev had a badge saying I don't like dark either and Hammarskjöld sent it to his friend and said I take this as an extreme recognition and I'm pleased. <laughs> so what it shows was that while Hammarskjöld, as a diplomat, always was trying to find face-saving measures, at times his loyalty to the principles of the Charter and their implementation did not allow face-saving measures all the time. And the Suez Crisis was one of those examples. Ever since 1956, neither France nor the UK were favorable of Dark Hammarskjöld. They simply did not trust him because he didn't follow the Western interests.